Good morning. Today is day seven of Revelation, a Bible study. Let's go right into our blessing for the day. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Go to my page if you want the paperwork. Two pages always, never more than that. Grab them, and I'll see you in a bit. So we are continuing with Revelation chapter 1. We're in verse 11, and John writes these words. Some of them we covered yesterday. The rest we're going to finish today in this particular verse. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and last. And what thou dost see, write in a scroll, and send to the seven assemblies that are in Asia. Send to Ephesus and to Smyrna, to Pergamos and to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. The loud voice that John heard was like the blast of a trumpet. Uh, it was commanding, it was, it was loud, it was attention grabbing. We're going to read a lot of scripture about the trumpet in Revelation. But there are also other areas in the Bible that speak of the trumpet, and here's just a few of them. Your first thing you're going to write down if you're writing in the paperwork is 1 Corinthians 15, 52, which reads, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. The next verse is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise. Leviticus 23, verse 24. Speak to the people of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall observe a day of solemn rest, a memorial proclaimed with blast of trumpets, a holy convocation. The trumpet, or the shofar, was used to get people up and ready for war. It's still used to this day to call the Jews to repentance for some of their special observances or special celebrations. The shofar was a horn. It was made of a curved horn of a ram or an ibex. It gives a loud, distinct tone that can be heard from far away. The ancient Jews believed the horn was as the voice of God. Isn't that neat? They actually associated the sound of the shofar with the voice of God. I, I thought that fascinating. So they trembled, which we read in Exodus chapter 19, verse 16. On the morning of the third day, there were trumpets and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast so that all the people in the camp trembled. The children of Israel did not blow these horns randomly. That, that never happened. They had strict instructions concerning the sounding, the time, the place, the length and number of blasts. God was very specific as he is in all his instructions. For instance, Gideon, one of my favorite uh, nervous heroes of the Bible, because Gideon was afraid and yet God used him in an amazing way. Gideon used to show fars to take down the Midianites. The Midianites had been terrorizing them for years, and we can read about this in Judges chapter 7, verses 19 to 22. So Gideon and the men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch, and they had but newly set the watch, and they blew the trumpets and break the pitchers that were in their hands. And the three companies blew the trumpets, break the pitchers, and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow with them. And they cried, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And they stood every man in his place round about the camp. And all the host ran and cried and fled. And the three hundred blew the trumpets, and the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow, even throughout all the host. But most importantly, the shofar was used to call the people to worship. And it will be used to signal the return of Jesus. And that gives me goosebumps. 
There's one last very important fact we have to read before we move on to the seven churches and the letters that they receive. Revelation 111 repeats the words of the Lord when it says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. Let's remember the first and last is a title that belongs solely to the Lord, the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today we're going to end our prayers with a song. I can't think of the trumpet of the Lord and not remember an old hymn my grandparents used to sing. <laughs> and again, my grandpa had a beautiful voice, but grandma had a nasally voice. She sang funny. But we're going to sing that as an ending, as our ending prayer today, and it goes like this. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair When the saved of all the earth shall gather on the other shore And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Let us labor for the master till the dawn, till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up beyond when the roll is cold up yonder i'll be there and i bet when god calls that roll he'll use a shofar may the lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and give you his precious shalom <laughs>